Hello and welcome to the Underbase. I am back from my uh, F. Well, bugger. <laughs> Couldn't even get words out. <laughs> yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Transmission is go. Underbase is live. And welcome to the Underbase. I am back from my holidays and therefore taking charge again. We kicked the little Irish one off. I'm joined by the big Irish one. <laughs> Hello. And the kind of medium Geordie one. Woo! Medium, nice. Mm, uh, Mid Geordie? I guess. People tell me I'm tall. I don't know. But you're very slight. I guess. And you're not overly Geordie, so. No, I'm certainly not Geordie. Can you say way A? Way man? Yeah, see, yeah, you got to put it on. Yeah. 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 Chris, can you say that? And I just want to hear it in Irish. What way A? That sounds Chris more Geordie, actually. <laughs> Chris can do voices, so it's not fair. Yeah, but I can't do Geordie. Mm, don't believe you. No, no, I kind of want to hear it now. No, I'm not embarrassing myself with Come that. Come on, dance for us, monkey. No! Get up Go on the table YouTube. and shake your booty. Do your voices. <laughs> Go to YouTube if you want to see my voices. Well, that doesn't make sense. You can't see your voice. If you want to see me perform, then. There you go. There are, you we, go. are we talking about voices still? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, followed on from Mikey's unsolicited request for a reading last issue. I think most people have probably seen the video of the dramatic reading I did from last issue that's on YouTube now. How many hits did that get in the end? Uh, we're closing on 3,000 now. Wow. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad going at all, mate. Well, well done. Congratulations. So somebody who never posts anything, I'm fairly happy. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show that even you know just you doing a scene um, gets 3,000 views. There's got to be that- some argument there then for voice motion comics or animated stuff, really. Well, there is the, uh, the unofficial... Uh, 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 audio play that's being put together by the Knights of the Audio Theatre. There's three episodes of that out already. Ooh. First three ish. You sound unimpressed, Andy. I'm not in it. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I was, I was giving him support. Moral oh, support. no. That sounded like the most patronizing. <laughs> yes, oh, la dee da. Moral support I've ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Okay, I can go for more have, sarcastic. Uh, How about this? How about this? Wait for it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. I'm, I'm fucking happy for you, Chris. How about that? Well, the Megatron video is submitted as an audition anyway, so we'll see. You may be hearing some more of that in the future. What well, it... mean patronizingly clapping your achievements at life? That's probably more likely, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Wait, I can. I can do this. <laughs> He's going to fall. Just following you around work and stuff and just clapping. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Bra <laughs> fucking. Uh-oh. I'm so happy for you, Chris. What a wink. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> In fairness, it's better than following around somebody with a tuber, isn't it? So That's true. You got me there, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty amazing as well. I've got to ask Chris, is this going to be a paid gig then? No, no, it's just a fan made thing. Oh, right, so what's the point? Oh, wait, are you talking about employing Andy to follow me around? Can't I? <laughs> I'd do that. I'd be fun. <laughs> well, would you, would you like fly over every morning just to do it? As long as my trips are paid for, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Commute, you know. Yeah. I'd go and pester Chris for a couple of hours and fly home, yeah. <laughs> Well, the uh, the audio play is just a fan project. All right. I, I, I'm just wondering how much money you would need to have as a human being to actually employ someone to fly to another part of the country to slow clap you for the entire day. Yeah, because I'd want my meals paid for. <laughs> Travel I'm not, fl- I'm not flying over to Ireland and, ha- and having to pay for my own meals. That's coming out of my pocket. What's that about? Oh, wait. Don't be cheap. 
I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a donut, you know. Someone give me a donut or a cookie from Greg's. Yeah, we'll see if I Whatever know. Irish Greg's is we called. We don't have Greg's. There's the problem. Ugh. Well, what's the equivalent of, like, the pastry sweatshop? <laughs> <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> Centra, maybe. Oh, man. All right. So where do you get your donuts from, Chris? I really eat a lot of donuts, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Get onto the comic, please. This is straight weird. Dude. I'm scared. Well, no, this is fine. It's an outtake. It's going to be at the end of the show, clearly. Well, let's be fair. It's not like there's much to talk about, is there, in the comic? Because you can just go back to episodes of the podcast and listen to what we said then. Yeah, because we was right. Like, what? Matt specifically was right. But yeah. I won't lie, reading this, yep. it was all hinted at last issue, and I was just sitting there going, yep, 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 and this issue was just like, fist bump myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, going into last issue with that theory in mind, everything that happened in that issue confirmed it, so uh, it came as no surprise to see that the, the theory was confirmed in the first couple of pages of this yeah. issue. So between between Matt figuring out the quantum duplication and and me figuring out how rewind the data ghost was tied into it, and Andy figuring out that the DJG were going to be involved in it, you just kind of pinned the whole two parter to the wall. Yeah, which kind of in a way ruined it <laughs> for me. It's yeah. like oh, oh 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 we know it all. oh oh. It also makes me worry that I understand how James thinks at least for these two <laughs> issues, and I feel like I need to go and get help. Are you saying your Clarice and uh, James Roberts is uh, is Hannibal Lecter? I'm more thinking um, along the lines of um, uh, misery. Oh, oh kind of, yeah. Which one is you and which one is Roberts? Uh, Roberts is in the bed and I'm breaking his feet. Oh, okay. wow. All right. So we'd like to clarify that. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe, you know. He's the writer and all, and I'm just the sick fanboy. That's true. All right. I'm going to bring you a typewriter, James. He's, Who is don't worry, James. He's just going to uh, hobble you. Him. Don't worry about it. Yeah, in fairness as well, bringing a, a comic writer, a typewriter, is kind of like half the job done. I'm going to have to fly over and do the same to Milne as well. <laughs> hobble Milne and flying back to the cabin. <laughs> then they'd be working together. You all right, James? You all right, Alex? <laughs> Hobbled. Yeah, he got me too. Uh, <laughs> one of them just goes, who's going to colour this? Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, just, Joanna. Yeah, just dobbing in your mates. <laughs> oh, it's jo- it's, yeah, it's Joanna as well, isn't it? So it's, that's a trip to Portugal and all. Yep. Oh, dear me. And it's another hobbling block for her. I know, it's just getting getting expensive now. I might just, yeah, that's, yeah that's, I was going to say, like, this is probably more than it's worth, to be that's honest. Three that's three dedicated a fan. Like. Yeah. In, in fairness, though, I mean, that's going to be what? That, so that's a, getting to Guernsey, getting to Canada, getting to Portugal... It's yeah. like a round trip. Like it's, you, you got to do a round trip, haven't you? Really, just saying. Oh yeah. yeah. So you're talking what? The equivalent to the cost of four or five issues in Forbidden Planet. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Anyway, we are here for Dawn of the Autobots, part five, something like that. Uh, issue. Th- <laughs> <laughs> Six lost, part, I don't know. <laughs> I've utterly, take a month off and I've totally lost track of everything that's happening. It's just like, from the moment the last issue ended to the start of like, today, it was just like, I don't do a podcast no more. It's just brain switched off totally. Um, issue 33 of More Than Meets the Eye. Um, yeah, uh, what's it called again? I'm really doing well. Slaughterhouse Part 2, The Road Not Taken. Written by James Roberts, obviously. Uh, Penciled by Alex Milne, inked by Brian Shearer and John Wyckoff. Um, Coloured by John Lafuente, lettered by Tom Belong and edited by John Barber. And before we start, we have three, four covers. Um, One of which will be easy to get, one of which you've got a sub, in theory, to get. Uh, the third one's a retailer incentive, and the fourth one is a convention exclusive. Chris. Well, lovely covers all round. 
like some really, really nice covers. Mm -hmm. Um, The stone one is gorgeous. Uh, and you know my fondness for abstract images, so the one of the DJD with the scales tickles me. Mm-hmm. But my my general apathy towards the DJD means I am moved in the direction of the Melon cover. Mm. Which is just a very nice, simple, atmospheric, scary cover as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Andy? I really like the Sarah Stone one a lot, but I, I don't like what the internet's done to it gay as shit yeah <laughs> like <laughs> only like i don't mean that in an offensive way i just looked at the cover and uh, when i woke up i had written on the screen in blood gay <laughs> as shit because that it's like it's trying to be filthy fanfic you know? <laughs> when you when you woke up was the room just covered with like crayon stains on the wall of red room Oh, I'm, yep. I'm worried Chris shined a black light around afterwards and just... <laughs> oh, God. Jackson Pollocked it. The walls were glowing. <laughs> it's like these had another paint job on. Jeez. Yeah, but no, obviously, the uh, the image of the huge dominating character towing over the tiny little timid guy dripping his viscous life fluid onto his face isn't remotely sexual at all. I, I didn't get that until somebody, I think it was actually your comment, I think. Uh, Probably. I saw and I went, oh, oh, Chris. You... I've only been on Tumblr for a week. <laughs> and look at me. Look at what I looked at the, at the horror image rather than the sexy Fifty Shades of Grey image, I guess, that some people have decided it is. It's, so, it's definitely got a... Well, see, I, I fall between the two in a way because it comes across to me as a little bit of rape. Yep. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a little bit rapey. Yeah. So yeah. Wait, which one are you having, anyway, Andy? I'm going to have to go with Alex because I'm, I'm, it, it doesn't remind me of weird fanfic. So, And Alex has got a lot of tension in that scene. Uh, I maybe I'd like a little bit more uh, light, just to, just to see a little bit more around him. But uh, it, it's really good. It's uh, I, I get I get why it's like that. It's it's a great cover. Cool. Well, yeah, I I think the Sarah Stone cover is a beautiful piece of artwork. Even though now all the connotations of it are going through my head, and I will never be able to look at it the same way again. Totally. Yeah. Um, ruins it. Doesn't yeah. It? yeah. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's lovely seeing her doing. It's almost a toned down of the Windblade style. It's a bit more, you know, not wanting to pigeonhole a uh, a house style, but a bit more Milne. Um, I like the design on um, the Roach cover. Don't really like the way it's coloured. It's a bit too purple. And it kind of, I think it loses a lot of the impact. Um, so I would have to fall down on the uh, the Milne cover as well. Um, hmm. Even though I completely agree with Andy, a little bit lighter. Um, it, it does it, look like there's been more drawn there that the colouring has filtered out. Just yeah. yeah. It's like it's been printed two degrees too dark. It's mm-hmm. it just lost a little bit of the... Uh, of the edge to it, and it, it, in doing so, it makes the makes it feel a bit empty. Mm. Um, it's like the image has not been finished yet, and if you take it along, um, Alex will finish it off at a convention or something. Um, it's a you know, I'd love to see what I'd love to see the original lines of it. To be honest, um, I think I mean there's there's nothing wrong with like uh, an image like that because obviously it's supposed to. It's a hugely dark room, and it's only the only illumination is Rewind's head cam, but. Um, there is a sense of emptiness, and it's just it's just a little too far up and to the left. Uh, if you know, what I, mean. Uh, I mean, obviously, I guess if you're looking at it on your computer screen, it's harder to see than if you have the the physical comic in front of you here, the way I do right now. Just, but um, it's just there's a lot of just totally empty space mm-hmm. happening on it. I mean, it's still as I said, it's still my favorite of the of the, of the covers, but they're, they're um, the the signature is just sort of floating there in the middle as well, and it feels like that ought to be consigned to a corner or something it's is a certain element of the image went out to the left and up and when they've printed it they've just sort of gone hmm too much at the top it gets lost let's just move the whole image up and to the left and then just we won't worry about the bottom i, w- I would say it's probably that there's more there in the lineup yeah. that's just been lost in the coloring in the bottom mm. right 
And the Casey and Bove cover is lovely as well, but Yes. It is what it is. It's good. It's lovely. It is, and we've seen it before. Yeah. We pretty much identical thing going back what five years at AA. Nine was it, oh, yeah. Yeah, two thousand and nine yeah. with uh Yeah. <laughs> Except for that one I had Greg Berger in, so it was instantly, you know. And a three pack of animated figures? Sold by Swindle? I think was that was the next year. That was the next year. That was the next year, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, the comic. We've got a previously page again. Chris, you must be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate them, I just find them dis- disingenuous. <laughs> So, we pick up from last issue. Rewind is alive in some form or another. We don't know how, we don't know why, but let's find out. Basic. I I kind of feel like having discussed this to the point of working it out, there's very little to actually add in other than to tell you the things that has been set up that we didn't quite click. Um... The quantum jump at the start of uh, More Than Meets the Eye um, that resulted in the explosion of the quantum um, engines, um, which caused the various problems for the Lost Light, where they ended up on the planet where Skids was, um, sent this Lost Light to another place. Exactly what we thought. It's split. So both are the Lost Light. Both crews are the same, which then brings up an interesting question later on. Um, so for the last year, 18 months, there have been two Lost Lights and two crews living in the universe together. And as someone describes it, the universe deals with that by basically ignoring the problem. But when the problem approaches itself, one Lost Light disappears and the other one that is in this problem remains which is as we as we described uh why the rod pod and the, the these guys the main the characters from this storyline the new crew that weren't on there at the start have carried on the djd are the reason why everyone is dead um except for rodimus coffin rodimus who did the spark eater thing if we go back to the spark eater um mistimed the um, the jump and cut his own head off. Basically. Yeah, I figured that one out last week. Oh, did you? He did. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I forgot about it. Then I then it happened, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's that's what how we get coffin Rodimus. Um, and he, then it just gets a bit sick and twisted, where the DJD basically torture, uh, make rewind film everything. Um, until he runs off screaming and passes out and signs the Magnus Armour. I like just the general um, conciseness that this is all related in, because I can't, I can't assume like the, I can't, I can't believe that this was all foreplanned right back to the very, to the very beginning. And it's like the guy who's oh, in any kind of story like this in science fiction, you have the guy who's dead in the real story turn up alive. That's yeah. that's your that's how you know everything is weird and wrong. Like that's just that's just a, a straightforward storytelling trope. But in the case of More Than Meets the Eye, it just so happens because I can't believe it was planned deliberately right the way back to the very start of the series. It just so happens that the guy who is dead is the one who has the camera that's always on recording all the time. It's just a really great confluence of narrative ideas that allows for this uh, gap of time to be filled in very quickly with mm. a little uh, data dump courtesy of Rewind. I was actually a little surprised that it didn't involve more um, of, of Rewind playing back history. Yes, it... Um, I mean, this is all... Night, night basically, Nautica figures out what's happened quantum-wise, and then Nightbeat confirms her theory when Rewind provides him with a data slug that fills in the past. Um, but the one key point to highlight here is someone has betrayed the crew and led the DJD directly to them. 
Yes. So now I think we can, but there's no more thinking about it. We can now safely conclude that the reason the DJD never turned up on our last light was because they turned up on this last light. Which then they also detected we, Overlord. Sorry. Oh uh, no! Which also explains when the um, uh, the what's it the, the necrobot? Ne- the what? The necrobot. Yeah, the necrobot having the list of yeah. the dead Autobots is. Presumably, I'm not yes. totally willing to point at that one yet, but presumably, yeah, mm. uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I just thought pres- I only say presumably because it's like there was a few guys on the list who we never saw the bodies of, and you would think if they were deliberately trying to do that, you would have made a point of showing us all the bodies. Like dipstick, I don't think we ever saw his body, but he was on the list. I remember that. Right. Okay. So I'm not. Not totally filled on that one yet, but it might just be with the way it is. But yeah, they 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 were able to detect his signal back then when somebody on board the Lost Light Rewind says deliberately shut down the sail and uncloaked his signature, which was a question that I don't think anybody was asking. Which is great. It's interesting. Mm. We, we, and we, we don't have to wait long for the payoff. Yes, you really don't. Um... Ravage gets badass all the way through this, including holding up a finger at somebody, which is really weird. Um, and Skids reminds Megatron of his responsibilities of trying to claim to be an Autobot, which I thought was a nice bit within there, in, ca- in case we'd forgotten how weird this was. Mm. Um, I'm just really enjoying Megatron and Skids as this double act. Yeah. Yeah, they play well off each other. And who would have ever thought that? You know, yeah, but, totally. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose Skids is a guy who's uh, gone through the process of of reinventing himself in season one. So, I think there's maybe a little something there where he can understand the idea of a bot who wants to maybe leave a life behind and then try and find a new one. So they need to clear the quantum foam, or they need to. Okay, s- well, sorry, you well, we're, we're 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 flying through this, but. Yeah. There's like all these quantum points that need to be made, which is that um, we we found out last issue that just this this general sector of space is thinned out as a result of a lot of teleportation activity, and if the quantum foam continues to spill out of the quantum engines, quantum drums, then um, it's it's potentially going to cause a chain reaction. It's just going to eradicate this sector of space and destroy Ofsted seventeen down below. So, is it seventeen? I think it is. Yes, which like could that. which could be a life, um, a life housing planet, which is why they've got mm. to do something about and it. Megatron's not. really not super interested, but that's what that's. Skids makes the point is like, you know, Megatron's like, well, where does it say that I have to help you do that? And Skids just taps the badge and goes right there, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh nice. <laughs> that was my <laughs> reaction. That was like, nice. Um, so yeah, there's more uses of the word quantum in here than quantum leap, to be honest. <laughs> um, the phone's spreading yeah, out. It, sorry, sorry go on. Oh, I, I, just, I was going to get on with it, but go on. No, Rip, this just like, because Riptide even makes a joke to that effect, you know? Yeah. And I think everybody, it's, um... Well, it's like the last issue, we we sort of compared this to like a Red Dwarf episode gone horribly wrong. Mm. And really, like, that's the kind of science that this is. Yeah. It's a, it's a Red Dwarfy, Douglas Adams-y, even though we did find out recently that Roberts hasn't read Hitchhikers, which is, I mean, I haven't read Hitchhikers. But it's still kind of weird to me to find out that he hasn't because there's so many points of, of similarity I, I, just just the idea of things being powered by improbability and quantum foam being well uh, as a term being deliberately misused uh, here to not mean what it really means um, uh, so everything you know the whole the whole approach of this the whole schrodinger's cat taken literally when of course it's 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 a it's a Schrodinger's cat was was a thought experiment that was supposed to highlight the absurdity of the concept of quantum superpositioning. Um, it's very very red dwarfy, very Douglas Adamsy, and but more than meets the eye has always been that kind of book. So as weird as it may be on some level to see this kind of this kind of science in Transformers, 
uh, it, it always it's, it's, it scans as right to me for for this comic. Yeah, it's not so off the wall that you're suddenly reading Manhattan Projects, for example, where you do yeah. sit there and go, "Eh, <laughs> mm. I, 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 uh, uh." It is. Uh, I think you guys nailed it with it's a Red Dwarf episode gone wrong. It is. The fact that you have the likes of Riptide referring to it as silly string, it's and that's if this was a live action thing, it would be silly string. Mm. Yeah, yeah if it was on a BBC two budget in the nineteen eighties, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um it's got yeah, it's definitely got that feel to it. It's a, you know, it's a big horrible event, but it's all set in a very cheap set. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just it's inside a ruined old spaceship with a small group of half a dozen or less people, none of whom has any idea of what's going on until somebody figures it out. You know, Nautica is playing the role of Crichton in this particular storyline. <laughs> so, who's Riptide? Is Riptide Lister? Because does that I mean like we can Riptide give Riptide? Is... Riptide... Mm-hmm. Riptide's a cat. Uh, I don't know if Riptide's the cat. Rip, Rip... Well, he's. He's as thick as either one of them, but he's a little. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure which one he is. He's probably the cat. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I'd like to believe that uh, he has the the Scouser accent, though. <laughs> Read all of Riptide's lines with the Scouser accent. Maybe maybe Nautica is really um, Holly. Oh, Lady Holly. Yeah, and Nightbeat is Crichton. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're working out. We're pulling it apart. Not enough characters. So, <laughs> <laughs> so who's Ravage? Uh, a scutter. Yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. A scutter, yeah, just skittering around, not <laughs> contributing anything. Uh, oh. Really, really angry scutter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but read him with his accent from Beast Wars. Oh, yeah. I can't get there with little Ravage. No, me neither. No? No. It's just, it's just, touch me again, I kill you. Touch me again, I will kill you. Yeah, that's a good line. <laughs> line <of> that. <laughs> so, they work out that they've got to get through this quantum frame. It's getting a bit too tight. So, they need to be small enough to get through. Rewind is small enough to. Um, so, Ravage is small enough, but he lacks thumbs, basically. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, I mean, you think, uh, Nautilus figured out that if they get through this and shut down the drums, which will, you know, stop the destruction of the planet, but it should also undo, uh, undo, undo everything. And for no clear reason, but timey wimey, spacey wacy, leave it at that. It'll reinstate the original Lost Light and erase this. <laughs> it's best they don't question quantum. No, and I'm and I'm not questioning it. It is just the way it has to go. Oh, totally. Know? Yeah. yeah. So they realise they need to get somebody else small enough. So they go down to Brainstorm's lab to find the shrink ray. Remember the shrink ray, kids? Remember it from God. when they were running around inside Ultra Magnus? It was a long time ago. Two years ago. Jesus. I know. Which <sighs> trade was that in? First one. Number three? Was it number three? I think so, yeah. Hmm. Came out between issue seven and eight, so... Oh yeah, of course it was the annual, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the third trade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they just, you know, discuss things like basically they discuss how the two ships have merged. So the Data Ghost, the changing of the um, the rewind tape from Chrome Dome, and there being a scream in there. Uh, and they're just sort of filling in those gaps for us. I mean, it, it is. And it, this is not a knock, but it is just a page and a half of 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 Nightbeat and Chrome, of Nightbeat and Nautica explaining the plot to each other. Yeah. Uh, at which point they... It's like, we've all figured this out already, basically. But they, it, it has to be it has to be in here. So it's not, it's not a criticism. It's got to be in here. And it's all done quite concisely as well. Yes, and it's done with a point. It's done with a point. They are looking for something, and in looking for something, they find Brainstorm. And he doesn't have dead his face... Body. Dead Sorry. body. Yeah, dead body of Brainstorm. It's and important. he doesn't, doesn't have a faceplate. But they find his faceplate, and on the inside of his faceplate is a Decepticon symbol. What? 
What? What? Yeah. So obviously, this rocks the crew somewhat. Yeah. Um, he is the traitor. Um, lovely yeah. exchange between Megatron and Nightbeat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, you know, they come to the conclusion that, um, well, they come to the understanding that if this brainstorms a double agent, then the other one must be as well. It's like, it's such a huge bomb, but it's like, they don't have any time to deal with it right now. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, I feel like this should be getting more, more time. I don't know what to feel. <laughs> um, and then they have a lovely way of um, getting around the whole Minimus Ambus thing as well. I thought it was very cleverly done because obviously this lost light didn't go to see Tyrest where Magnus was killed. Yeah, the, Yada, yada. So they find out about Minimus Ambus by domesticated scraplets. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have the. They find out like the shrink gun didn't get built. So yeah, they they took care of Magnus's nanocon infection by yeah domesticated scraplets. I like that idea. Yeah, I, like, I like the idea of training scraplets. And then they killed them. Yeah. Well, you got it. <laughs> and then, because they can't find the shrink ray. The Megatron comes to the conclusion that he has to admit that because his spark has been modified to cope with mass displacement before, he can still downsize. Oh, I could have said something earlier, but here's a survival tip. When everyone's lining up to make sacrifices, always get to the back of the queue. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> It's he lovely. Robot. Yeah. He's a smart man. Robot guy. Yeah. He's seen horror movies before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Megs and Rewind get through the quantum foam, turn off the quantum um, while well, they barrels at this point. Uh, the they seem to be the cores of yeah. the engine. Where... Uh, we have a lovely touching moment between Megatron and Rewind as Rewind thinks he's going to be erased um, when the two ships come back together. Um, and they switch it off. Is Megatron being nice here or is he just saying these things to Rewind to just get him over the hump and just get him to bloody do it? Well, I feel like it's pleasantness. Yeah. Is it? I don't know, I, I wasn't convinced. I thought it was like, yeah, 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 whatever, mate, you're irreplaceable. Just turn the bloody switch, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But Messing he... about here. Planet below, we've got to save. Well, I Master. chose to interpret him as him letting him die or cease to exist happy instead of miserable. Yeah, That's a nice way to do it. I'll especially, give you that. Especially <laughs> after he's had the moment where Skids has reminded him of his responsibilities. It's kind of, it, it's a... It's a little bit of showing Megatron can actually do it. And he actually offers for him to re- go back as well and not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ask him if he wants to go back. Yeah. And that's the end of the story. Or. The switch is flipped and everything turns white. Yeah. So we have a couple of epilogues because you can't see out a story without some pages explaining stuff that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, unless you're reading any comic. Transformers comic in the last 20 years. Uh, Von Byrne would be proud. <laughs> and everything's back to normal. Everyone's coming back. Um, and they're coming back in reverse order. And Chrome Dome returns. They send him outside to the roof. And Rewind sat there waiting for him. I couldn't believe it. Um, and they have a lovely touching page where a rewind who's lost chrome dome and a chrome dome who's lost rewind just put an arm around each other. 
Yay, I, wanted, I wanted him to stand up and throw him into space saying, you're not my rewind. <laughs> Ghost! Zombie! Ah! <laughs> Just throws him into the atmosphere. He burns up. Where's rewind? What do you mean? You mean that, that horrible ghost in my mind? No, nah, I got rid of it. No, you yeah, killed guys. him. <laughs> you killed him. Ooh, well, the thing is... Yeah, yeah, it was a ghost. Just call, just tell me it was a ghost. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. It was a ghost. Oh, wow. Jesus. Mm. I was legit surprised they went this route because, as you know, I've never believed Rewind was really dead. Yeah. Guess he was. So I guess this is confirmation that Rewind was really dead. Unless he isn't. Well, no, because he would have been erased. Oh, well, man. That's not strictly true. No, no, yeah. we know because we'll. Because we Drift to... isn't back. And Drift was what? dead on there, and Drift wasn't on the ship. Uh. Yeah, so. Well, no, Drift wasn't on the Lost Light. Right. Yeah. The one that's just is beginning to rematerialize now. Oh no! So you mean like you said, yeah? It's kind of a weird question. Uh, it's like was it literally only things in the proximity of of this effect mm. that happened, or did Cosmos blink out on Earth for a couple of minutes, or did Drift blink out wherever he is in the galaxy as well? It's... You know what I do when these questions pop up? I turn my brain off and I go, "It doesn't matter. It's Co- space. <laughs> it's time travel. It's that kind of nonsense." Sometimes Comics. it doesn't need to make sense. <laughs> Well, I think the answer probably is that it does seem to be a proximity thing. So I suppose if if rewind is alive out there somewhere, there's there's the possibility that there are two rewinds. But awkward, I, I, awkward. <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like uh, I feel like this is just a sort of a tacit nod of saying, yeah, he was really dead all along. Yeah. But then I love the way that back on the recap page, like Swerve has a stab at that anyway. Yeah, you thought you didn't think he was dead, huh? <laughs> yeah, what's that? You never believed he was dead in the first place. Well, okay then. No, wait, oh, wait, I'll tell you what happened next. <laughs> like, wow, it's like he's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Megatron wants to send a private message back to Rodimus because of Brainstorm. Um, and Ravage is like, no, you know what? I'm doing one. <laughs> Screw you guys. Um, and Megs offers him a place on the ship. As an ally. Um, and then we have slightly puzzled looking Ravage face. Meow. Yeah, like he says, you've seen the dark side of, of the Decepticon cause with what the DJ did, and it's like, but do you still want to be part of it? You can get out. You don't have to sort of be the vicious killers. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not against Ravage sticking around. But I, yeah, I kind of wanted him to go back and hook back up with Soundwave on Earth. Yeah, because I just like what's been set up with those characters' relationship just prior to Dark Cybertron and the Barber stories. Yeah, you know, like Megatron has someone to confide in and someone he can be buddies with without having to deal with Autobot nonsense. Yeah, I see the logic of it. It's just yeah. I kind of wish it wasn't around. Can you know yeah. sent Laserbeak up or something? I don't care much about. Oh, Laserbeak. Laserbeak. <laughs> Maybe Laserbeak can get development now and uh, on Earth, though, and you could care about yeah. Laserbeak. Or Buzzsaw, to a lesser extent. Oh, I was about to say, all rat bat, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. Chris. Oh, so dead. He's dead. Should have just sent, sent, sent Slugfest, because that would have made so much sense. You know what we need more of? Beast Box. I'm, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. As long as he's a aspiring DJ on Earth. And he beat boxes around Galvatron, and Galvatron doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh. <laughs> Soundwave gets to DJ, why can't I? Bad monkey robot cassette. <laughs> yeah, we need some more squawk talk. <laughs> I'm all for those characters turning up and getting roles, yeah. So. They will at some point. You know they will. Sooner or later, yeah. I hope so, yeah. Uh, uh, and Rewind isn't the only thing that's stuck around. Um, the briefcase is still in Night Beat's hands. Yeah. So now there are two briefcases. There are pictures. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And in Swerves, everyone's having a party and having fun and we see the monster bots and brawn and in comes brainstorm 
Um, Atomizer serves him a drink, tells him that there's a rule that says no briefcases. Brainstorm opens the briefcase. <laughs> and everyone falls down. I'll let you in on a little secret. I can do whatever the hell I like. Dun, dun, dun. Brainstorm's a dick. How does one comic drop the same bomb twice just as effectively both times, if not more effectively the second time? Because, I mean, I think it is quite simply because you've had that literally two pages before Megatron going, hmm, I need to tell Rodimus he has a Decepticon on board. Oh, so what it's going to be is, does Brainstorm know? What's the play out going to be? How's it going to work? You know, is it... Are they, yeah, are they going to keep an eye on him? But, uh, no, straight out, straight away, boof. It's like mm. storm. Obviously, we have no oh, idea no. how it's going to happen. What's going to happen? But yeah, no, I can't. No, no, I can't even form a guess here. You know, no. it's it, I. Nobody could have seen this coming. No, no. I, I mean. mean I've never, like, in, in all of the last however many years of insane mass guessing conspiracy theorist horseshit that I have seen come out of the <laughs> I have not seen anything close to this. No. Brainstorm an undercover Decepticon. And I, I don't know how I feel. Because Brainstorm's grit. We all love Brainstorm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, str- I'm a little struck by the fact that in these times of, of grey morality, where these stories and these comics are showing that being a Decepticon and being an Autobot is not all black and white and good and evil. They're, they're things in between. It's, I'm struck by the fact that it's one of the most single most morally dubious Autobots who turns out, no, it's okay, he's just evil. He's just evil. He's all it was. He's a separate guy. I'm a little... But then I remember his little talk in Jingong and his, and his absolute his absolutum regarding the notions, of, the notions of morality. And I'm like... <sighs> because if you realize like when this is collected into a trade... The first page of that trade is going to be that conversation. Yeah. Then the final page of that trade is going to be Brainstorm going, yeah, I was bad all along. And I'm like, holy crap, that kind of blows my mind. It's it's a bizarre scenario we find ourselves in, really, because you kind of knew what the status quo was. Um, the question is... Now, is this Brainstorm then summoning the DJD as he's already done in the other Lost Light? And if so, why is he summoning them now? Megatron. But why now? I don't feel like the opening of the briefcase is summoning effect. No. 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 Well, maybe it is. It seems to have a different effect here. Well, you yeah, know, of course, it's had a, it's had an effect other than to uh, to summon them. So, and we remember last issue where space went timey wimey, and Roberts did tweet that everything you need to know to understand what's in the briefcase is on that page last issue. So, I guess I have to accept that all that out of synchronized, out of order panel stuff was related to the briefcase. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I never believe anything the comic wants to try and make me believe about the briefcase, but in this instance... See, I, I thought it could be that in that universe, the decisions Brainstorm made made a different briefcase, or at least have a briefcase that did a different effect of this one, because this one would have well, had had different had events potentially leading up to creating it. Well, no, well, he, he got on board with the briefcase, board, didn't he? Did he? Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. When he appears in the first issue, he's telling Red Alert why it's exempt from security checks. So. Right. So he had it on him beforehand. I mean, mm-hmm. but the idea is though, like that, that he he's had brainstorm has carried a, a bunch of different things in that briefcase over time. Anyway, like bullets mentions how it's just what he uses to transport his horrible, horrible weapons around in Kimia to take them for review and things. So the idea seems to just be he's just he's just had he's just had something specific in it for the course of more than meets the eye, but it hasn't always and forever been what's been inside mm-hmm. the briefcase. Uh, so it does. 
beg the question of when did Roberts decide the brainstorm was going to be a double agent? Because going back and reading some of that stuff, it's kind of like, ah, oh, oh. and it, it's still, it's a, this does seem to come, as you say, nobody predicted this. So it's come left field. I can't call it totally left field because he's always been the character with the greatest morality on the ship. True. I, I would firmly believe it's been in place from the start. I feel like that's that's probably been locked in there from the start. Although it does seem like an odd thing for him to be both undead and a Decepticon mm-hmm. agent. It's like, you get one thing, Brainstorm. Jeez, stop hugging all the things. <laughs> there are other characters. They can yeah. do other things. But uh, clearly this is Brainstorm's bump up from the B level of characters as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just how many issues he survives. Yeah, I mean, he can't stick around. After, I mean, if this is legit, like if he is honestly like a really for real Decepticon spy, and I don't know why he wouldn't be at this stage. Like Nautica thinks the symbol might be planted or something. Hmm. So, I mean, I guess there's room for some misdirection here yet, but I don't know. I mean, he's just done this in the bar, and it's like, oh, God. Yeah, and that's the thing, what has he done? Yeah, I mean, I assume everybody is just unconscious, not dead. Yes. Um, Which would, you know, how many times has this happened before? What's Brainstorm done while everyone's unconscious? Has he just popped the locks on the briefcase before and knocked everybody out and had his wicked way around the ship or something? Uh, What is he responsible for? Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how it plays out. Mm. And as we were saying before the show as well, though, it looks like we could be waiting a couple of months to see how this one shakes out. Mm. Yeah, because of uh, the the issues we've got coming up, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything very imminent about uh, what's happening. Yeah, next issue sounds like an aside, and then the elegant chaos storyline starts after that, and that's a flashback story. And that's at least two or three? I think it's three, yeah. So, you know, we're talking Christmas at the earliest, really, before we know. Yeah, I feel like like this is, well, this is volume six in the trades, the, the first six issues of season two. Yeah. And I feel like maybe those next four are, are, uh, are volume, uh, volume seven. And then maybe like the payoff for the end of the, the end of the first, the end of the first year of season two could be, yeah. Could be uh, could be that coming back to it, but anyway, that's just random scheduling speculation, basically. Yep, yeah, yeah, we have no idea, which makes a nice change after having all the ideas. Yeah, I feel like we blew our idea quota. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything right ever again for no. like the next year now. Mm. Mm. But I'll take I'll take it that we got one right. <laughs> yep. Because boy, oh boy. Um... Right, so shall we uh, shall we round this up? We've got we've flown through fairly quickly. Um, so Andy, just give us some th- overall thoughts of the issue, enjoyment levels, and let's discuss the artwork because we haven't really touched on it at all. Uh, I enjoyed the issue. I liked the twists and turns that we got. Uh, one thing that I thought was also a tad ridiculous was the uh, the sonic screwdriver, sonic wrench coming back out again because now it's a uh, binoculars or periscope now it now has little lights to see through this can literally do anything mm. literally it seems to have no end I'm waiting for it to become a massive cannon when <laughs> uh, a DJD fight comes out or to unfold into a scythe or something ridiculous like that uh, we're only one step away from that one step away it's imagine just... if those little lights weren't on there What would she, what would it look like she was doing just imagine those bits weren't coloured in. Mm. It would look weird, right? It would look odd. Yeah. Uh, we had some good exchange between the characters. Good. Um, I enjoyed the fact that uh, Voss pulled off Chrome Dome's fingers and shoved them into his eyes. You would. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, that was pretty badass. That's a... I, I like the 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 um, uh, description of it as well. 
Uh, he begged, he refused, and then he stuck the, the things in his eyes. Uh, <laughs> and Rewind's like, I ran! The second he stopped screaming, it's like, yep, that's not a good way to go, I, w- I would bet. I would put money on if you had... How many needles he has? One, two, three, four, five. Five needles going into your eyes. That's going to that's gonna tickle. His neck as well. What's that? It looks like he might have some in his neck, too. No, no, that was his neck being ripped open, if oh, I remember. Okay. That that's also gonna sting. That's not gonna be yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I like the fact that uh, Cyclonus got his head blown up. <laughs> that was kind of amusing. He looks very surprised, as you would, as your head's uh, exploding. Um. Yo, pipes in two universes gets pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> poor pipes. Pipes in one universe is stamped on, in another he's ripped in half. This is not a good way to go. I'm throwing that out there. Uh, no one does well against the DJD, it seems. No, there is a certain sense of being a little bit overpowered, aren't they? Well, I, I would also say that they were taken by surprise. And these are guys who took out a uh, a Phase 5, a fit, what, Phase 6 Yeah, Yeah, I mean, it just feels fairly consistent with yeah. the, what's been established to be capable of. Yeah, we just need, at some point, we need to have some... Uh, phase six counter. Otherwise, you know, I don't. Have we had a phase six counter for the Autobots yet? No, that was Pryl's whole game plan with Overlord, but they didn't get there. Yeah. Uh, so I've always like I've been wondering for a while now. Like, what was the anti phase sixer? Why did the Decepticons not win the war? And especially if they had the DJD. Granted, the DJD are cleaning up the Decepticons, but these guys are pretty effective. I'd put these guys on the front line. Yeah, wouldn't you, know? you, wouldn't you just do that? Wouldn't you just send that, those boys out? Job done. Yeah. Well, we know that they, well, we know that they did. They obviously did lose a few because there were like more than just the three phase sixers were part of the Warriors Elite, so they're not invincible. Yeah. Uh, and um, by the time, you know, obviously once they they were down to just Black Shadow and um, Six Shot and Overlord. By the time Megatron put the infiltration protocol into play, where so is Six lost. Shot? Six Shot is out there enjoying his freedom. For how many years has he been enjoying his freedom? Six Shot has been off the grid since Spotlight Metroplex. Yep. Yeah. It's so a long 2008? time. Yeah, That's him, a long time. Him and the uh, Throttlebots. No Nobody sign. cares. No, I don't uh, care about the Throttlebots. I care about Six Shot. I am totally up for Bumblebee turning out to have always been Goldbug after he got sucked into that singularity and dumped back in time. Oh God, that would be that would be so bad. And he said we we were keeping uh, the throttle bars out because we didn't want to cause a time paradox. As he takes yeah. his little faceplate off and goes, "Hi guys, hi, it was me all alone." Oh. I, I, I keep my fist at that. I like the idea that Spot's right. Yeah. I like the idea of Spotlight, Metro, uh, Spotlight Metroplex is set far, far in the future. Um, but then where's Six Shot? <laughs> well, that's the, that's the thing. It doesn't matter where it is because we know where You'll he ends up. Yeah. Matters to me, damn it. Matters to me. Uh, first page as well. I thought it was cool that Alex managed to basically draw uh, Transformers Prime Starscream in uh, Riptide's face. Because that's hella Starscream from Prime. Look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Look at it. It's good. But it's, it's, it's hella uh, Starscream. No, the artwork's uh, good. Um, until... Ooh, whereabouts is it where it gets really ropey? I feel uh, like it's the first epilogue. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, the first epilogue page. And it's, I think it's the, the ink... Yeah, it is. It's definitely. The inking. Who, who, it wasn't Alex that did the inking for this, I don't think, no, was I'm it? I'm assuming that um, Shearer inked the most of it, and then Wyckoff inked, the, um, inked at least the first epilogue. Yeah, because that epilogue's really bad. And but I think the last. All the other pages of the epilogue seem fine. It's uh, that first epilogue page. Yeah, the first epilogue page is bad, and epilogue t- uh, two is really bad as well. The only, I think oh. the only thing that saves the last panel is the fact that Joanna's a badass when it comes to colors. Yeah. Because if you look at Atomizer, woof. It looks like Atomizer to me. I'm not seeing How tall is his head? His head's the shape of a pill. 
Well, they, you put that under the anchor, like. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. The the inking gets real ropey, uh, which I think kind it of just gets a up. little a little flat. Is how I yeah. would describe it. A little bit mm. heavy handed. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. But, it doesn't quite get fine enough. Yeah. Like the like, it, I mean, the the single worst page for inking is the first page of the of the first epilogue. And oh, it's yeah. like the further you recede back into the distance, the uh, the looser the inking becomes. In that, mm. but I think apart from that, the art's uh, as enjoyable as it ever is. Uh, lots of nice backgrounds and stuff. Uh, lots of detail everywhere. Gross pages of torture and violence. So fills my quota. Um, but there's always room for more. There's always room for more gore. Just throw it <laughs> out there, James and Alex. Come on. Make me feel awful when I read these things. Make me feel <laughs> gross. It takes a lot. It's a high yeah. bar. I've seen some stuff, son. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. Bar set. Uh, I think it's a very successful issue, I must say. Um, I am driven to compare it to the as the resolution of what is essentially a six part arc starting with the disappearances in the very first issue. Um, I'm driven to compare it to the resolutions of the Overlord arc and Remain in Light, mm-hmm. which, as you know, are some of my I, well, you know, I can't call them like most hated issues or anything, but they're they're some of the the beats in More Than Meets the Eye that I've felt least satisfied with. But I feel like this one just. Uh, gets the mix just right like it is in large part um characters explaining the plot to one another by absolute necessity but it's done in a really concise effective way the plot moves along even as it's happening um and even though as you say that we'd figured all this out already and you know sometimes when i'm reading i'm like okay yes okay, i know this i figured this out already but but i have to accept that that's not a universal fact and that it's it's uh, the information is handed out, per- perhaps a little heavy-handedly is not the right word, but ex- it, there's there's a, there is a sense of of, of expository dialogue through nece- by by necessity. But um, the issue just finds uh, other things to throw at us, like the brainstorm thing in particular was just like so unexpected. I did not, I yeah, or rewind surviving. I think that's been a subject of debate whether or not that would happen. And uh, I was I wasn't quite sure, and um, I imagine there will be lots of happy faces um, about the fact that that's happened. Uh, and you know they, they managed to make the exposition fun and bantery, and Nautica and Nightbeat's relationship continues to be entertaining to read. Uh, Skids and Megatron just have this great interplay going that I want to see carry on as well. I'm really enjoying Getaway to some extent. Yeah, you know, it's like he gets really pissed off whenever they find out Brainstorm's a traitor. Like you know he mm. punches a hole. He punches a hole in a wall, and like Skids is like, "Don't waste your anger on him. He's dead." And Getaway goes lucky escape and i'm like fucking hell i mean i've got the great sense of getaway that i i kind of wouldn't want to piss getaway off yeah. <laughs> you know like he's so charming and chatty most of the time but i don't know what to, where it's crept in and, and he's 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 quite a rationalist as well whenever like he starts to exp- he has that discussion with skids last issue about um how yeah whatever it was like skids was worried he was going to start hating megatron and get it was like i see your point man it's just the, the there's there's a, there's a level of there's a uh, there's a, a level of scale here that's hard to process and it, it might well happen but I, there's just I, there, maybe it was the whole rapey thing with him and tailgate that we still don't quite know where that's going and i noticed he takes quite an interest in rewind's well-being in this as well so i'm like like does get away just like little guys i don't know but um I've got this sense that I wouldn't want to cross Getaway, and uh, mm. it's quite it sort of explodes out there with this issue. Well, he is in the same team as Skids, mm. where he uh, could, you know, sp- specifically cl- um, sent out on a mission yeah. to kill lots of people. I have a very specific set of skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of which involves probably quite a lot of guns. Um, mm. Say getaway could do bad stuff to you. Yeah, you got a bad side. Uh, and I'm interested in seeing character develop. Uh, I mean, he seems like he's going to be one of the prominent. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Like this is this has been like a six part story, and we've definitely the focus has been shown on characters who are nearly all um, 
new additions for season two getaway riptide megatron nautica nightbeat and skids is here because he was one of the newcomers as well but skids is also skids now even is not the same bot that he was in season one after the resolution of season one i think things have changed for him and uh he kind of gets to be the carryover pov character so i'm not sure now going into the next run of stories whether or not we can expect focus to swing back in the direction of the season one cast at all or not or or if this group of characters will continue to be our our core group the way whirl swerve cyclonus tailgate skids chrome dome rewind were for season one rodimus magnus um but uh i'm looking forward to seeing more from a lot of these characters based on what we've seen in these issues just a, just like narrative wise, just like a very satisfying issue. I was concerned about it, and I was concerned, but even though we'd figured it all out, it still had plenty to offer. The resolution was delivered smartly, quickly, in motion, uh, so that I didn't feel bored having to read things that already sussed out. Uh, just like the like very well accomplished, I have to say, I was very impressed. And artistically, yeah, it's another strong one from Alex as well. But I would just I would echo Andy's comments about the inking there. It really jumped out when I hit the last epilogue. I was like, ooh, that's a bit rough. Mm. No, but uh, Alex uh, succeeds, as usual, with aplomb on all the awful, challenging things that Robert's asked him. <laughs> uh, I particularly like the scene where Megatron and Rewind go outside into the the uh, the web. Mm. Um, sort of the monochrome effect of the colouring and this bright garish web going around them. It just, it just visually that page, the first page of it works beautifully. Um, I really enjoy that one. I said to you guys before, Nautica's mask is doing my nutting. <laughs> I don't care if she's got it or doesn't, but it just seems to change panel to panel. Is it on? Is it over her eyes? Is it over her face? Is it on top of her head? Well, it can be in all those places. Like we've seen it, it can phase out and just not be apparent at all. But when it's phased in, it can be down over her face or up on her forehead. Yeah, Which like is, a welder's mask. Yeah, well, okay, fine. But then it's got to not be distracting. And well, if, if I'm noticing it, and it's, and it's distracting me from reading the comic, then it's not doing its job. Um... And it, this issue in particular bugged me. Um, maybe it's just changing too often. I don't know. Um, but but I mean, I'm looking through the issue now, and I'm not seeing any examples of it really appearing suddenly. And the only thing uh, I, the only time that it came on where I was like, I, I didn't like how it looked, was when it was just over one eye. Oh, that, that yeah, was the, that was. Page, I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be the visor or not, but I guess it is. Page yeah. four, panel one, full face. Panel two, full face. Panel three, nothing. Panel four, full face. Yeah, okay, okay, that's a fair point. Yeah, it has. Um, this, that's probably an artistic error. Yeah. Yeah. Um, page, the page, what's that? That's four, five, six, seven. Page eight, nothing. Panel two, vi- um, over eyes. Panel three, over eyes. Um, the page before that, so two scenes prior to nothing, it's full face. Um, okay, so there's two panels where the visor's missing. Um, then we go from... Then it's on top of the head and stays there, which is fine. Then it's over a face oh. during Brainstorm's lab. Yeah, and well, that's and the t- seat has moved, and it is going to be down over her face for that scene, too. Yeah. Your but, face weather and stuff. But then it's gone when they reveal the faceplate. Yeah, so she can see the faceplate. She's going to have retracted it, so it's not obstructing mm-hmm. her. But anyway, that, that's my point. It's yeah, okay, no, but there's there's two panels where the, the visor's missing. Okay, the, okay, so yeah, I am willing to say those are artistic errors. Yeah, that that has, but yeah, actually, no, when you pointed out particularly the one on page four, where it is just just missing in between two panels of it being there, that's yeah, that's a bit of a cock up. All right, no yeah. argument there. <laughs> As I say, and the, the other one's just as glaring as well, because it's full face, nothing, then just over the eyes. And it's like, mm, just establish and leave alone. If you change scene and you change location, fine. I understand that. And as you say, I do understand the one going away when she's had a look at it. But I almost need her to 
I don't know, do something to show that it's going. So just tap the side of her head or something to remove it. Or just, let's say, don't distract me from what I'm reading by changing it. It's not that cool a thing. Well, I will you there, yeah. Yeah, to, to, I, to distract I, I, me. It has a design element, but it's like, I'm kind of in the position where it's like, well, just have it or not. Yeah. I like it as a design element, but I'd rather, I would rather she had it all the time, personally. Yeah. Um, other than that, artwork's lovely. I completely agree with you. Now you guys have mentioned it, the heavy inking on that page, and in fact, in all the epilogue, it's just a, it is a bit flat. It's a bit monoline. Um, Joanna's colours, especially in that last image, are sensational. Mm, mm. Girl can do lighting so well. It's painful how mm. beautiful she makes some panels look. Yeah, uh, uh, kind of over my 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 sadness about the loss of Bertram. No, not a slap on Bertram or anything, but I have I have worked through my grief. <laughs> <laughs> um, story wise, yeah. Even though I completely agree with Chris, you know, even though we picked it up, it's still surprised. It still did what we expected, but in an interesting and fun way. Um. It made me love Ravage. I want him to stick around and just be a dick. And just actually snap at people and bite people and... I don't know, just be a little bit nasty. Um, I think it'll be a nice character to bring a little bit... The darker shades of grey to the Lost Light again. Um, Because Cyclonus now has obviously gone full... Softly, softly. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, thoroughly enjoyable issue, as we'd expect. So, Chris, give us a score. Well, I think I have to go to a 4.5 on this one. And if I enforce the no point five marks? Then you can shove it up yet. Uh, no. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, if you're going to enforce it, then I'd probably have to go upwards to the five. But Okay, I won't enforce it. Uh, <laughs> Andy? Uh, I would say Chris is right. Uh, 4.5 is, is, a, is a fair mark. Uh, if you are enforcing, I'd probably say a four. You, you go down to a four, so when we average it out, we're both right. There you go. I like. I like the way you think. <laughs> Unless Matt decides to screw the pooch. <laughs> it's a one. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I annoyingly agree with both of you, and it's not. It's better than a four, but it's not quite a five. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a damn good comic, and it's probably the best issue of this that we've reviewed as a t- as our stint on it so far. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would give part one... Well, I said, last issue I said, the last issue is was the best issue up to that point. I'm not sure if this issue is better than the last issue. What did I give last issue? Andy, do you remember? Oh, no. I don't remember did I give things. it a four and a half as well? If I give it that a sounds four, about right. Because if I did, then... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, no, well, I honestly don't know if this issue is better than last issue or not. So well, I would say that this two-parter, anyway, has definitely been, yeah. as you say, the best of season two so far. And I will add, completely agree with your point, Chris, uh, that as a payoff to a story, a lo- uh, an arc, this does it. And it gives me hope, because I completely agree with you about Remaining Light and the Overlord arc really not paying off in the way that we'd hoped. Um, this does it and then some as well so thoroughly impressed with the arc as an overall thing um right anything to add gentlemen hmm don't think so I can't think of anything else that needs covering I feel like that's the lot yeah right okay then well, thank you for listening to us on the Underbase. We've kept it short for you uh, but we will be back in approximately a month's time we never know if feels like an age since we did a show um yeah, I think next month is a is a an Atilio Rojo penciled issue so yeah, okay 
I think that means we that we shouldn't expect any delays with it anyway. Yeah. Um, so thank you to Chris. Thank you to Andy. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And we will see you next time on the Underbase. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning into our broadcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Underbase or interact on FullMetalHero.com. When I when I remember the name of it, um, Amy will edit it together, so don't sound like a complete moron. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Oh, <laughs> My brain hurts. Uh.